The Story of Bavato's Dungeon. Date, 28th Quasuary, 144 BD. The story and dungeon are both set in King Bavato's Dungeon, which is located in the town of Bavatolia, about 40 miles north of Dugendi, at the foot of the Dungendish Mountains. Bavatolia lies on a large, gently sloped hill, about 10 miles in diameter, elevated to about 150 meters above the lowlands at its highest point. It is a fairly isolated town, for it is blocked by the impassable mountains to the south, and to the north by a giant forest 70 miles long and 50 miles wide. Thus, it is unknown to most of the major towns and cities nearby and its existence has not yet been recorded in Melanfrau. However, in spite of the poor communication links, Bavatolia is a relatively advanced town, for it is rich in resources, mainly due to the presence of the mountains, which provide abundant supplies of building materials and precious minerals, and which also provide abundant rainfall for the numerous farms in the area. The proximity of the town to the large forest, however, has forced the inhabitants to erect a large and very thick wall around the town perimeter, which is guarded mainly at the north end against incursions of monsters from the forest that periodically attack the town. Due to these attacks, most of the townsfolk live to the south of the town or in the centre, but the castle was instead built at the north end of the hill which allows it to help guard the northern perimeter and avoid ossuary floodwaters, which occur each year. Tolbus Grobler, a famous dungeon exterminator of Bavatolia, previously having cleaned out the dungeons of some of the nearby towns and protected them from invasions of monsters, was asked by King Bavato to give his dungeon a good clean-out. It's full of really unpleasant monsters, King Bavato told him. None of my guards can even go down very far without being attacked, and almost all of the prisoners have been eaten. We are even hearing things banging and scraping on the sealed door. But no one has dared to open it, since the last surviving guard escaped to see what it is, in case whatever it is rushes out and infests the palace. We're really desperate. Your qualifications are the best I've ever seen, a stainless record for all of your past jobs. And so we need your help. I'll pay you double the usual fee, 24,000 grecos for the whole job. That's 3,000 for each of the eight levels if you can clean it out properly and protect us from the vermin. Tobus was very tempted by the promise of such a huge reward, pondered over it for a while and decided to accept, so he signed the contract the next day. However, the resident builder, a man of 25, also wanted Tobus to do something else for him. As Tobus, now fully equipped for six weeks underground, walked through the palace to get to the dungeon entrance. The builder caught sight of him and called from a side corridor, beckoning him to follow. Tobus, intrigued, followed him and was led to a small room in a quiet part of the palace. What do you want? Tobus asked. Listen carefully to me, said the builder. There is something I want you to do for me when you're down there. Please, it's very important to me and probably also very important to solving the problem of why Bavato's dungeon was invaded. What is it? asked Tolbus. Five years ago, King Bavato came to power in this kingdom and ordered the building of his castle to replace the previous one. Because he was in a hurry, he ordered the building of the dungeon to be carried out at the same time as the palace building, so he hired two sets of builders and two architects one to build the castle, and the other the dungeon. I was part of the dungeon building team, but since I was just a builder's apprentice at the time, being very new to the trade, 
and not an initiate into the Dungeon Architects Associations yet, my contract only allowed me to help with the first three levels and no more. Once my contract finished after a month, I was allowed to wait for the rest of the builders to finish, as my father was working with them, so I stayed at the palace. The team on the dungeon worked steadily for two months, keeping in good contact with us at the surface, until they had gotten to level 8, the last one. I was waiting at the surface for the report, which came every two days now, as the dungeon was very deep, but it did not come. Reassuring myself, I thought that the message was just late, as it had been before, and came back the next day. The report still had not come back. I waited for a week, checking every day to see if any message had come through, but the messenger had not returned. I now was very worried and scared for the team and my father, so I asked the king to send down another messenger to see what happened. He was worried too but he could not find anybody brave enough to go down to look for the lost builders. Since even his guards were frightened, he couldn't send them down either, so he eventually dropped the matter quietly. I was so upset that I begged him to reconsider and try again, and when he refused, I threatened to report this to the Dungeon Architects Association. He told me to be quiet, and warned that if I tried to cause trouble, I would be thrown into his dungeon for life. He then dismissed me. I kept my promise because of fear of King Bavato, and because I couldn't tell the DIA anyway. Since the most important rule is never to reveal the secrets of the architect who built the dungeon. Whatever happens to him. I soon quit the initiation process since I was frightened that what happened at King Bavato's dungeon could also happen to me once I became part of the DIA. I also feared that I would have had to keep even more of these types of secrets, since if I became a member, I would never be able to leave or reveal anything that I learned. After this, I completed several projects and jobs above ground for over the next few years, never mentioning anything to anyone about what had happened, and quickly became quite a famous and wealthy builder. I then applied to King Bavato to be his resident builder, since the previous one had just died, in the hope that I could secretly find out what had happened to the lost building team. I never dared to ask anyone directly, and could find nothing from the old notes, letters, and parchments that I found. So, this is what I want you to do. I want you to find out exactly what happened to the team, and when you return, to tell me exactly what you found down there, so I can solve this mystery. I think you should also try to find the source of the monsters too. A rumor has been handed down in the building trade that there is some sort of organization somehow filling dungeons all over the 8th with monsters. We have no idea about what it is or where it is located, but we suspect that it is deep beneath the ground, since it's the only logical way that monsters could infiltrate dungeons. Tobus paused after this to think over what he had just heard. But why didn't the soldiers find out what happened? Surely they went down there later on, right? Asked Tobus after a short pause. No, only the first three levels were ever in use by the king. A guard had heard of a strange but unpleasant noise coming from the stairs to level four when he got there. And this scared the rest of them so much that they made the king have it sealed off. So it was never explored below level three. I think, however, that the seal has been broken as the guards from level 3 that escaped reported that the monsters were coming from the general direction of the seal. So it looks like the infestation definitely came from below. I see, said Tobus, feeling uneasy. I can only do one more thing for you. I will give you the original maps the architect made for the 8 levels, which I copied secretly from the originals when he left them lying out. I will also give you the notes that I made on them to help you find your way around down there. They are accurate up to level 7, but I'm not sure if 8 was completed entirely. Apart from that, I wish you good luck. Tobus, I hope you return safely and that you discover the secret of the lost team and the evasion of the monsters for me. Okay, said Tobus. I'll do it. Tobus then made his way to the dungeon entrance, where a scared king and a huge escort of guards was waiting. The king wished him good luck, and the heavy door slowly creaked open. 
As soon as Torbisek walked through the door, however, it slammed shut immediately. We're counting on you now, Tolbus, called the king from the other side. Don't fail us! <laughs>